Welcome back to WFO's 12 Rigs of Christmas, and today we have a doozy for you. This is a kind of a special little Jeep that's uh, had a lot of views on the old interwebs. <laughs> We're going to get back uh, behind the story and find out really what's going on with Clark's Jeep. So let's see if they're in the shop. They don't even know I'm coming. Hmm. Safety first. Wear personal protective equipment. Is that like a rubber? Really? Merry Christmas! <laughs> what's happening, boys? What's up, Santa? Hold on. Where's your fridge? You guys look like you're working hard. You need a beer? <laughs> Got one. Well, this is Clark's shop, and this uh, shop is pretty famous on the old interwebs, uh, but uh, we'll get to that a little bit later. Clark, uh, tell us about this Jeep. What is it? This is a 83 Scrambler. 83 Jeep Scrambler, that would be a CJ what? CJ8. Thanks for the, the best beer. Jeep. I found one in your fridge in the break room. Absolutely, it's break time as you can tell. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, as a business owner, looks like you're making a lot of money over there today. Oh, that, my ace crew right there. <laughs> they look like they're working hard. <laughs> uh, so 83 Scrambler, um, you actually bought this from a friend of ours, Elio, correct? Yep. And so there's a lot of history and it traced back to, I believe Scott from Extreme Gear built this thing years and years ago. Um, and when you got it, what engine did it have in it? it had a Dodge Magnum. Yeah, some sort of a Dodge V8 that was a complete turd. Yes. And it had the Dodge Automatic. It was horrible. It was a complete turd. Absolutely. Uh, but it did have an Atlas, right? It had an Atlas. Um, and, and 60s. And 60s. Yep. But leaf springs front and rear. Yep. So Narrowed. it actually worked pretty well. Uh, flex good. Yes. Um, and worked good, but the power sucked and you couldn't program it or do anything. So you decided, uh, let's change that, right? After we broke the frame a few times. <laughs> <laughs> so Clark called up and said, Trevor, I want to build this scrambler. What can we do? And the first thing I told him, what did I tell you first? Don't do anything. Sell it. <laughs> Leave it the way it is. It's go buy a JK. It's going to cost too much money. So go buy a JK. Yeah, but luckily he kept it true to the old CJ and the scrambler. So you went and bought what first? Uh, ordered a new frame. Ordered a new frame. So we've learned this a lot. Don't mess around with the old frame if you're going to the next level with 40s and one ton. So you got a frame from Throttle Down Customs, yep. which took six months. Uh, actually, it wasn't too bad. It was right before the big rush, and I think about three months out, we had a new frame sitting here. And then you decided LS. LS, so we got a 5.3 LS from BD. Well, let's, uh, let's just go look under the hood right. first. Pay no attention to this green machine here. So this is, uh, as you can see right here, it's a 5.3 from BD turn, Turnkey Engine in Reno. And so you just called up Brian and said, give me an engine ready to go. <clears throat> Told him what I was doing and uh, he set me up and... No cam or anything, it's stock, nope. right? S stock, stock and engine. And it runs perfect. Runs great, no leaks. So, advanced adapters radiator, has the uh, mechanical fan set up like we always like to do. And the Cobra Snake, the center dump headers like we always do. You got dual batteries on this thing. Yes, sir. And those are just hooked together, right? They're not, no they're, switch. They're isolated. A perco switch, like yep. a boat perco. Yep, yep. That's good. And then what do you got going here? Because this is what we always like to do. Yep, got some Hydro Boost so brakes there. Hydro Boost brakes. Got the ARB dual compressor mounted right here on the inner fender well, next to the wiring harness and fuse panel for the BD engine. And then you got PSC Hydro Assist. So here's your reservoir for the PSC. Um, you went ahead and put a strut tower between the, the uh, coilover mounts. Yep. So that kind of brings us to the front and underneath. So. Throttle down customs frame. One thing we decided when we were talking to you is, Clark, let's get the steering box all the way out front so that we can move this wheelbase forward. Yep. So had them add six inches to the frame when they built it. We sold them this advanced adapters mount, and then I made them uh, notch the frame there to get the bolts in because that's the best way to fit it. Mm -hmm. One of the cool things too is these uh, power steering fittings with the banjo ends get it nice and low profile and getting the uh, lines out of the way. What kind of winch does every Jeep need? The best. The best. The Warren 8274, gear driven. So yep. you had that from something, huh? Uh, picked it up from one of my buddies, had it. Um, his brother-in-law owed him some money, so he bought it for 500 bucks, and I got it for 500 bucks. Oh, 
$500 deals on the 8274 are always a good deal. Put a new higher horsepower motor on it. Oh, you did the upgrade from yep. Warren. Yep. And then you went with synthetic line. Yep. And then sunk it down a little bit because with the throttle down customs frame, it doesn't have that factory plating in here. Yep. So you can sneak it in. Then just your standard two by four box tube front bumper. I can see you got our little clevis mounts on there. Yep. Um, Pretty simple. Now, what you guys got to understand, and this is why the whole reason why I wanted to come look at uh, Clark Scrambler is, he didn't have us do that. Uh, somewhat obvious, kind of. I mean, I don't think we would just leave rusty, raw, uh, unpatina. It's called patina. Call that patina. Yeah. Oh, okay. So Clark took his Jeep apart uh, with the help of his thirsty henchman over there. Uh, stripped it all the way down, got rid of the whole rolling chassis, axles, everything, and did this on his own. <coughs> so you guys had a lot of long hours in the shop, right? A lot of and long. And it wasn't you. It's all the buddies stopping by, you know, next thing you know. They mean they just drank my beer. Another case of beer, another case of beer, and then you really didn't get anything done that night? Correct. You ever had that happen? Every night. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> he said, what kind of axle should we run? So we went with a, uh, right here, this is a 1991 Kingpin Ford Dana 60 and it's full width, and it has our truss on it. It has our upper three link mount right on the top of the axle running seven eighths heim joints. Um, it's got all of our suspension brackets, lower link mounts, upper link mounts. So basically what we did is we gave you uh, the cookie cutter Lego builder kit, right? Pick up full of parts. So he, he, we got the front axle put together for him, 538 gears, air locker, chromoly axles, 35 spline outers, reed knuckles, um, if you take a look over here, because of the up travel and the coilovers, it just has crossover steering and the drag link actually goes to the underneath of the steering arm so you can get all the up travel. King air bumps, King 2.5 coilovers, and Clark, correct me if I'm wrong, you got 12s in the front and 14s in the rear? 12s all the way around. 12s all the way around, okay. And uh, we went ahead with our universal front coilover mounts right on the throttle down customs frame. Clark put those in and, and uh, his guys over here. This is the uh, overflow for the radiator. Not many spots to fit things, but they're there. Um, and then if you, as you work your way back underneath, so you have a 4L60E, correct? Correct. So 4L60, don't mind my ass crack hanging out. Guys. And then uh, you went ahead and built a two by four cross member here yep. in the shop and then plated it with 3 16 steel. Yep. Um, and then the rear back there is a GM 14 bolt with our WFO full truss and then triangulated four link. And then this also has our universal rear coilover mounts, 2.5 12 Kings in the back, King air bumps, got a Curry anti-rock in front of the axle right through that void that all the scramblers have in the body there. And then one of the things that you guys did is you had to re-sheet metal the inner fenders, right? <coughs> Correct. So if we you look to, over there. Had to open up the fender wells, so we had more room for the tire, so we had to make some inner fenders that would seal everything. Yeah, the stock out. scrambler opening just isn't enough. No. And by doing that, you could trim all the way back to these. These are Genrite fenders? Genrite fenders. To the Genrite fenders. Um, so it, it, scramblers always look weird in this area when you put tube fenders on because of the factory body. Yep. 40-inch um, nittos, right? Yep. And then Hutchinson double bead locks. Yes, sir like we always like to do. Um, so triangulated four link rear, ARBs, sway bars, uh, three link front, 538s. What about the inside? Why don't you go around the other side and tell us about the inside. I remember when Elio had this, this roll cage was here, but it stopped right here because he had a half cap. Correct, right? correct. So at some point in its time, we welded this rear section in, half cab could no longer fit. Correct. Um, and then when you did this rebuild, you took our CJ front. Yeah, it wasn't the cage wasn't tied all the way to the frame, um, and so we used your CJ. So our CJ stanchions down through the floor and tied into the frame. Yep. Yep. And you know when you when you've experienced a rollover, sometimes you want to gusset your roll cage a little bit. You know, not so much here or here, but right about here is a little bit of evidence of what you're going to see here uh, sooner than later. So you had to put a new pre-owned steering column in this thing because your original one broke right? out of a camaro out of a junkyard oh, you, you pull oh you pull it yeah. nice yep uh and then that's just the um 
winter's performance side wider uh, shifter. Correct. And then Atlas with twin stick. Yep. And then right here on the dash, you went ahead and put in S pod for all your switching needs. And I noticed you haven't labeled the switches yet. No, no that way they can't steal it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then do you listen to a lot of AM radio? With Ab that? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> that, that, I have a hunch that might be Bluetooth. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. then I forget what these are. These speed hut gauges. Uh, yeah, speed, so the all classic, speed hut the gauges, classic speed digital hut gauges. gauges, and it's got the tack inside the speedometer on that one. Yep. Which, if you're going to build a CJ and do it all up, you don't want to put new shit. This nope. this is classic looking, even even as the clock right there. That's right. Um, center console, you know, you probably run like an old school iPod. Sure, whatever <laughs> my kid brings. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then back here, looks like you got a pair of our speaker cans in there. Um, that is a pretty impressive sound bar you got up there. That's uh, more that's, speaker cans. That's here. your backup sound system right here. You gotta have Just a, always case. have a backup. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, and then uh, you looks like you haven't got to your uh, ice chest tire rack scenario, right? No, no, no. None. We 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 haven't got to lots of things as you can see, uh, it, but that was. And then underneath there, you could see the 14 bolt. So this is a newer disc brake 14 bolt. So it's a 2001 or newer. It's got factory uh, disc brakes with e brake. Yep. Uh, and then the gas tanks in the back here with the heavy duty skid. Gin right. So you didn't really extend the wheelbase that much, did you? Nope, just out the front. Just I, wa I wanted to keep this, the factory uh, scrambler look to it. Yep, I like it. Well, it is classic. It's red. I'm Santa Claus. Can we talk a little bit about, about the elephant in the room? And it's not you or me, even though we're a couple big dudes. You know? Yeah. We don't miss meals. No, we don't. No. How tall are you? 6'4". Six, 6'4". Four. Six, four. Yeah. Yeah, I'm 6'1". You're a big yeah. mother. Never mind, I can't say that. Give us a little backstory on what went down in the shop. Uh, I don't know how long ago it was, maybe 10 years ago. Mm. Right, about right? About 10 yeah. years ago. It was, it was like the year after you got the Jeep. Yeah, um, and uh, we just had to try some flexing on it, you know. And so the boys and I, after an afternoon uh, harvest, probably harvest party, I think it might have been, we uh, decided to come down and flex the Jeep out. Well, that video made it all the way to the North Pole. Yeah. It, it went viral. That's right? right. So this is what a lot of the rice farmers like to call a bank out wagon. And uh, Clark decided that he would try and see if he could highline that tire, which, you know, in retrospect, here's 6'1", you know, 285 Santa looking good. That tire is uh, right about chin level. So that's probably not something that you want to flex out on if you're trying to get to the top. So Clark, do you feel like you might need a little redemption? I think I need a lot of redemption. So how about we just try and reenact it without rolling over? You know, just, you know, for all the fans. You got a lot of fans. Let's do it. You know, I've never put out any video that had that kind of traction, like your video. I'm glad I could help you out, Trevor. Yeah. I don't think you're helping me. You might be helping yourself. <laughs> Well, let's do this. Let's get up it and do it the right way. All right, we're going to redeem ourselves. Don't make me hit my head. Hey, easy, okay? <laughs> That's why I got an airbag next to me this time. <laughs> So this is when you just back up. That's what you do. Yeah, exactly. I didn't make it to the top last time, so I was <laughs> kept trying to go. Yeah, shocks feel good. That's very nice. Uh, they're soft. And that is how you do it, ladies and gentlemen. A uh, little clinic put on by Clark here, uh, just to show you how to do it the right way. Anybody want to come try it out, just give me a call. <laughs> you ever take this thing on a beer run? Let's do it. Well, uh, why don't you take Santa out? Let's uh, get out. All right.
Trevor, we're stuck. <laughs> well, I think I ought to go get that bank out. Go get that bank out. <laughs> Fuck. Somebody. Get your lady to sit in here. It's just a one-man show. I guess I have to have Mrs. Claus sit on my lap. All right, here we go. So, Clark, you redeem yourself on the bank out wagon. Then you go out in your own field and you get stuck in the ditch in your own field. Bank out's always one up in me. Bank out wins, pulls yeah, you right. out, and that thing is fun to drive. So. I got to know about this thing. Tell me about this thing. Well, so, it's a bank out wagon we built in the shop to haul the rice. It's got a... Looks like a divorce transfer case Absolutely. Right here. Rockwell transfer case. And uh, the driveline angles are perfect. Uh, you built this right in the shop with yep. the boys. Yep. And it's got Clark forklift axles in it. That's right. Uh, so if you've ever watched Swamp People, that's the same forklift Shelby Stanga has that's out right. there lifting the logs. That's right. Military forklift with uh, basically planetary both steer axles with lockers in it too, right? Yep. Yep. And uh, what size tires are these? Big. big. Yeah. I call them big. <laughs> so when you get to this size, it's just big tires. And it's four wheel steer, right? That's right. So I see this pitman arm pointing down. That's right. And a rod going to the front axle. And it goes right to the knuckle on the axle. So basically you have hydraulic rams turning the axle, but the hydraulic rams are on the axle. Correct. Right? Right. And then these linkages just link the front to the rear so they turn evenly. They stay in time. And one turns right, one turns left. That's right. right. No crab walk on this bad nope. boy. No. Nope. All right. And then up front here, I noticed as I walked down from the AC cockpit uh, with a stereo that you got a Caterpillar 3208, 3208 V8 turbo mm. diesel, right? That's right. 250 horse. I know a few things because this motor's in my bus. And you have an Allison uh, 543 transmission. So this sucker hauls a lot of rice all year long. Yep. I think I need to take it for a drive. Have at it. Let's go check out a real four wheel drive. <laughs> Fire it up, lights on, and uh, stereo. Takes a little while for the old hydraulic steering to hook up, but uh, I think we ought to take it out in the field, right? Why not? Oh yeah! What's happening in America? Woo! And there you have it. Another 12 rigs of Christmas to Clark and his scrambler and his bank out wagon and a little piece of America right here. Don't forget, 12% off till Christmas on the website. Get it! Yeah! The mic is stuck in the Oh, I might have broke the mic. <laughs> oh, shit. I got a fucking camera malfunction. <laughs> hold on, hold on. I dropped right something. All right. Show. Here you go. Thanks, Zert. <laughs> uh, That's a rope. I got to throw this away. 